Welcome to the Market Edge Tech Talk with Will Pauley and special guest David Blake. We're going to review the market conditions of the past week, as well as longer term trends from a technical perspective. Take a closer look at the major indices, and to wrap it up, dig into a handful of individual stocks and ETFs requested by subscribers. If you have questions or want to submit a stock for next week's webinar, email us at support at marketedge.com. Hello, and welcome to the Tech Talk for Tuesday, August 30th, 2022. I'm your host, Will Pauly, and I'm here with my co-host, David Blake. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing good, Will. Thanks for asking. All right. Let's start off with a look at uh, what the market's been doing this past week with a look at the market letter. Okay. Well, last week was a little bit of another rough week. Um, not, not as bad as, as what we have going this week. But anyway, we started out last week after uh, a sharp sell-off the previous Friday, which would have been, I guess, two weeks ago now. And uh, uh, investors were kind of casting an eye to the Jackson Hole some, uh, Economic Symposium. Uh, Chairman Powell was uh, expected to give a little speech on the economy, and hopefully they were, I think a lot of investors were kind of hoping that he was going to maybe be a little bit more dovish than he was after the uh, FOMC minutes uh, were released uh, earlier last week. And um, Dow Jones actually sank about 1,000 points over a three-day stretch. Uh, we rebounded midweek on hopes that maybe uh, you know, we'd gotten some weaker economic data it maybe could sway the Federal Reserve to slow down their rate hikes. I think that's kind of that was kind of wishful thinking. Uh, then we got some decent uh, jobs uh, claims last week, and um, actually GDP came in a little bit better than uh, than expected. In this case, um, the better news was interpreted as as, as better news, but that's not uh, what's going to happen going forward. So anyway, the, the better news with jobs at all. Got people thinking. Well, maybe the uh, you know if, if maybe we can sidestep a recession uh, with uh, as the economy holds up with these rate hikes. But you know we're still we still got a long ways to go in the hikes, and uh, we're, we're we're not going to avoid a recession going on here. So we we still need to extend this thing out a little bit longer. Um, so anyway, Powell came out and um, he was actually more hockey than what investors were looking, and basically he uh, came up with uh, no pain, no gain, and um, the Federal Reserve is going to do all that they can and keep to it uh, to fight inflation. In this case, um, it, it's better. It's gonna, they're going to have to probably go tighten a little bit more than they want to because they can't uh, come in dovishly and then they say, okay, well, we, we missed the boat again. We're going to have to keep raising, keep raising. They want to nip it in the bud. And, um, you know, what we're going to see right now in September, within I think it's about three weeks away, We'll see whether they're going to raise a half to, or three quarters. Um, last I looked, I think we were at about a 65% uh, probability that what they're going to raise three quarters. A lot of a lot of investors are still hoping for uh, a half uh, rate point hike. But um, you know, either way, it's 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 another pretty big move. It's going to going to knock the uh, um, you know we'll probably keep keep a, a lid on stocks going forward here for a little bit. Um, across the board, um, after he came out with that speech, we gave a, um, a pretty broad, had a pretty broad sell-off. Energy was higher, but every other sector was uh, in the red, I believe. Um, growth stocks and technology stocks are taking the brunt of the selling, as as was the case um, yesterday on the thousand-point drop. And um, we're actually and also seeing in, uh, uh, yields move higher. The yield of two-year uh, T-bill last week closed at 336. We actually hit a, uh, went up yesterday and it went up a little bit today. We're at the highest level that we've been since 2007, um, somewhere around 345, I believe, on the two-year. The 10-year uh, crossed back above 3%. It closed at 3.04. Yesterday, we closed at, um, uh, let's see, yesterday, we were somewhere around 3, 3.15, 3.20, something like that. So, uh, it, it, they're, they're, they're moving higher as, as the Fed keeps getting more bullish. Uh, the U.S. dollar last week was you know, was flirting with a 20-year high. That's still the case. Uh, yesterday, we kind of hit uh, up there again and kind of bounced back a little bit. Crude oil prices uh, also on the rise. Several reasons for that. Um, one of them uh, is last week was that uh, OPEC was saying that because of all the hedging going on, that they may have to uh, cut production a little bit. Um, do the paper hedging and stuff that was going on, and that would cause, obviously cause uh, uh, oil prices to go up. Now, 
a lot of people are trying to get oil prices down because uh, with with prices up here, Russia obviously is uh, able to sell. They're, they're flooding the market, and they're still making a lot of money off of their oil. Today, we saw uh, oil prices fall about 5%. Um, I think um, the traders would like to see oil get down around you know, below $80 a barrel, just uh, the type of squeeze on Russia. But that's that's not what we what we look at here. That's just um, probably my opinion anyway. So anyway, so the, the S&P and 500 and NASDAQ were down for a second straight week. Uh, the, the market edge market posture was downgraded to from a neutral uh, down to a, a, an avoid. And the Dow Jones was down for the third time in four weeks. Okay, the technical condition of the market deteriorated. Um, we talked uh, the previous week about um, the, the rally had kind of st was stalling out up here at key resistance levels. And by that, I mean the a down sloping 200 day moving average. That was something that, um, you know, it, it was it was nice that we got up to there. But if we couldn't couldn't get above that, it was probably you know going to mark the beginning of the end there. And that's what happened. We had momentum that now slipped uh, negative MACD has crossed over into bearish uh, ground. Uh, for, for all the different indexes, uh, breath was negative last week. We had a uh, um, you know, the advanced decline lines on the NYSC and Nasdaq both lost ground for a second week, and we also had uh, new 52-week lows uh, out to the new highs, uh, I believe, on both exchanges. That um, uh, and the new lows were expanding. We, we we actually had I think the Nasdaq had gone through something like 37 weeks in a row where they had more new new lows and highs and we actually reversed that um, that trend for about a week, for about two weeks. But now it looks like we're, you know, making more new lows again. We did actually see uh, investor sentiment uh, uptick a little bit. Um, we had uh, it, it was it's still neutral, but um, both retail and professionals saw a little bit of an uptick. Uh, uh, retail, actually, I take that back. Retail investors over at AAII slipped to 27.7 from 33.3. And the uh, uh, the hedge fund managers, they uh, their exposure index fell to 54.9 from 64.4. So we were they were starting to get a little bit more bullish as we were going into this resistance level. But once that started to fade towards the end of last week, uh, we saw uh, both the retail and the professional guys become a little bit uh, a little bit more bearish. So that was um, that's kind of to be expected. I'm sure we'll see a big drop in it again this week. In fact, we might actually on the uh, Bulls and bears, the uh, uh, percentage of, uh, of of bullish and bearish invest, uh, investment advisors, we might even see a big jump in those who are looking for a correction, uh, which means you know, we, they're, they may be expecting another big drop uh, here. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see that, but on the, on the, at least we're looking at probably it may be a play at the June lows, but um, you know that things are uh, uh, you know it, it, it's changed. You know, we had this big summer rally. We're going into the fall now. Um, we, we we stalled out at major key, key resistance. We do know the Fed's going to keep on raising rates until they feel that they, they've got inflation under control. And um, all you know, all spring or, or last year, we were saying rates are going to be lower for longer, and now we're saying they're going to be higher for longer. And that's not a uh, uh, something that you want to invest in. Also, with uh, earnings with with higher rates, you know, when, when rates go up, it it causes uh, you know it causes cuts to forward earnings, and we're going to probably just like last uh, quarter start to see third quarter, maybe even fourth quarter uh, earnings start to take a get cut. Um, it, it, you know, a lot of companies had decent uh, surpri surprisingly beat uh, estimates here after the second quarter. Um, kind of the strength of the earnings actually was a little bit surprising. However, you saw a lot of companies that beat uh, on est beat their estimates. Um, came out with some uh, weaker forward guidance. And even though they may have beaten on the second quarter, you know, the stock market's looking six months ahead. And they, when they say that we're going to be have, have a little bit weaker quarter going through the end of the year, uh, that's what they're going to trade off of. And uh, we saw a lot of companies with decent earnings start to, start to uh, trade down. And I think that's probably going to be the trend here uh, moving forward a little bit. All right. Um so obviously the rally off the June lows has run out of steam and the market letter went from a neutral posture to an avoid last week. Is there a level that you're watching here where investors might jump back in and how bad do you think this will get? All right. Well, yesterday, okay, we had, 
you know, we, we, we tried, they tried to bounce a little bit. Um, you know, they, uh, they, we started, we started, we opened up lower yesterday and then and the, some bulls came in, they bought the dip and actually they raced the, about a 300 point drop in the Dow. Got, we got back to even and then uh, we rolled over again. Um, I was mentioning before that the uh, energy sector was the only sector that was not, that outperformed last week. They actually uh, led uh, stocks higher. We had uh, you know some of the oil related stocks uh, were, were higher, you know Chevrons and Oxy, some of those. And then um, in the afternoon, they started to talk a little bit about some of the uh, 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 economic data that was going to come out this week. That if it's uh, if it's better than expected, we're kind of in a in a bad news. Uh, I mean, good news is going to be bad news here for a little while because good news means that the Fed the Fed's not going to feel any pressure to uh, to slow down on their rate hikes. Uh, you know, today we had jolts. They were expecting I think 10.1 million job openings, and it came in I think uh, no, they're expecting 10.3 million job openings. And it came in like an 11 one. So almost a million more jobs are, on, are are open now than they anticipated, and then consumer confidence. I, this is probably due to some of these uh, um, Build Back Better or whatever uh, uh, Inflation Act, or whatever coming out, uh, getting passed. We saw uh, consumer confidence actually jump up to 103.7, I believe that we we're expecting something like 94. So it was, so it was a big, you know, came in a lot more, uh, you know, uh, higher than, than what we were looking for. And that's after about three or four months of the declining consumer confidence. So that was something to look at. Now, as far as what we're looking at right here, uh, if you go on, to, we're actually in kind of an interesting spot right now because um, I, I ran some charts that are, we're not really able to see them right here with today's sell-off. But um, in yesterday's article, I, I, I said that um, the major averages yesterday had traded off of technical levels. Um, if you're not familiar with that, what that means is, Right now, there's you're not looking at economic data, you're not looking at um, earnings adjustments or anything like that. You're you're just kind of sit, kind of waiting and sitting on the sidelines to see what's going to happen here with rates. Um, when are they going to when are they going to kick in? When are when are we going to start to see inflation numbers start to go down? And when I say that we're we're trading off technical levels, yesterday the, the immediate sell off took the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones on, uh, and and Nasdaq basically right down to their 50-day moving average. Hit that, you, hit, you saw buy, uh, buyers come in, they bought that. They rallied the, uh, the, uh, the major indexes back up to the 100-day moving average. And if you look at the chart, you'll see that um, it's the, the, the bounce yesterday stalled right there, and we finished somewhere kind of right in between. Now, today's uh, uh, action, we came down, we actually traded down below the 50-day moving average, which is another negative. Um, uh, the S&P right now also broke down below 4,000. The 50-day moving average was at 4,009. Uh, there's all, that's also where the pivot point, the pivot point on the S&P 500, which is, was right at 3,997, it's broken below that. When I, when I talk about a pivot point, that is where uh, uh, not, not only day traders, but active traders uh, look, when, when something falls below the, the pivot point, they're looking to, to short it. Uh, the, the first first level of uh, support off of pivot points comes in at 38.54 for the S&P 500. Um, let me look at something else over here. For the for the Dow Jones, uh, the first level of support coming off of this sell off would be um, right around 31,022. We also you know we also broke below the 50-day moving average on the Dow Jones, um, and we're, again we're trading below the pivot. Uh, another thing about this, remember we, we, we talked in several of these uh, tech talks about how you can use the 14-day RSI, not only as an overbought and oversold level, but if it uh, if you're seeing a sell-off and the 14-day RSI uh, breaks below 40, uh, that means that you, mo mo most likely you're now in a, in a downtrend and, and you're going to stay in a downtrend for a little while longer unless we bounce above 40 and uh, it can turn around right here. But but we're down around 35, 36, 34 on those, which means we've broken below that 40 level, which is another actually uh, sell signal to active traders. But the, the Dow Jones is now, again, below that pivot point and below their uh, uh, below the 50-day moving average, as is the uh, uh, NASDAQ. Now, one thing I did notice uh, that I wanted to bring up, 
with the pullback earlier today, uh, so I'll start with the, uh, uh, the, the Dow Jones. Uh, yeah, we talk a lot about the Fibonacci retracement. And again, taking the, the, the fibs from the uh, June low up to this recent high here of, uh, you know, week two weeks ago or so, uh, yesterday's sell-off actually kind of stopped right around the 50% retracement of that whole move from the June lows up to the uh, August highs. Okay, well, we broke below that today, obviously, and now we're uh, coming in here. If, uh, if the Dow gets down, to, breaks below 31,420, and that means that it'll have broken through the 38.2% uh, uh, 38, uh, retracement level. And that means, well, I'm, I'm sorry, that means it would have retraced 61.8% of the whole rally off of June lows. And when a, normally when a, uh, a stock or index does, you know, re, uh, retraces that much, you're probably going to, it's a good chance that it retraces the whole, the whole rally or whole move, which means that uh, that's, that's another indication that we're probably um, going to make a run at that new lows. Again, the number you want to watch there is around 31,420 on the Dow Jones. And we're, we're at 31,740 right now. So we've got a little bit uh, more downside before we break through that 61.8% retracement level. So kind of, kind of keep that in mind. If, we, if you see it, trade below that, that's a number that would probably mean you've got some more, uh, you actually could get, have a chance to short some more. Now for the S&P 500, um, the 50% retracement level uh, was reached this morning. That was around 39.80. That was, that was where the S&P 500 had retraced uh, 50% of that move from the June lows up to the August highs. Um, looking right now where we're at. Okay. The uh, it it's, it's, looks like it's broken through there right now. Um, again, that was a 39.80. We're at 39.75 right now. Uh, and below the 50, you kind of want to watch that level because if, if we can't get back above that 30, if we can't get back basically above 4,000, then you're going to make a run to the 61.8 level, which would come in right around 38.99, which or say 3,900. We break below 3,900. You can pretty much count on this thing uh, retracing the whole amount of, of the previous move. Um, as far as the NASDAQ goes, I'll hit that real quick before we wrap this up. And I do have one other thing I'm going to touch on uh, about somewhere where you could put some money. Uh, with the NASDAQ, it broke below uh, the 50% retracement of that June to August low today. That 50% level came in around uh, 11990 Right now we're at 11,830, so it's it's going uh, below that. Right at 11,566, as I say, 11,575. That would mean the uh, uh, Nasdaq has, is is, break, is breaking the 61.8 percent retracement level, and if if it goes below that, then you're probably looking at another. Uh, also confirming that we're probably going down to the uh, you know to the June lows. But those levels, those levels that we just talked about right now, are, are kind of like the last line in the sand that you want to you want to kind of watch here um, to see if the, if, it, if anything is going to hold. Well, go ahead and go to the uh, 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 the charts here on Market Edge. And I want you to put up XLE. Okay, one of the most important uh, or, or reliable, actually, I should say. Uh, 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 patterns in, in chart, charting is a head and shoulders and a reverse head and shoulders is, is a uh, is when you when you have a on the left hand side going back into uh, let me get my stuff up here again real quick if, if you look at this little uh, uh, knob down here about from mid June down to the June lows and we had to bounce back up that's a left shoulder and then right there from about the end of June we came all the way down made a new low uh, in mid-July, rallied back up here to the 50-day moving average towards the end of July. Pulled back again towards the first week of, of, of August. That here, that's a right shoulder. And if you actually, if you draw a, a, a line across that level, going from about mid-June, draw it across that uh, neckline and shoulder line, you're going to come to us. Uh, if you take your fingers or whatever you want to take, go from the head to the neckline and put it up, uh, right, put it above where the neckline is. It's going to tar make a target somewhere up here around 90 to 92, 
for the XLE, which is the uh, Energy Select Spider Fund. I would buy those on on buy the oil stocks and maybe some of the gas stocks in here um, because it looks to me like you're probably going to make uh, you know at least go maybe you'll put in a double top. I don't know, but I think you can get a trade right now where XLE is trading at eighty ninety. Um, it's it's kind of kind of finding some support here around a thirteen day moving average. As long as this that as the XLE stays above, uh, I'm going to say, yeah, let's say. 70, 77, um, yeah, this, this reverse head and shoulders is intact. Now, if you go over to the Market Edge uh, uh, ETF Center, and if you look at the, uh, let's, let's, let's click on four-week percent change, and you can see over the last month, um, sector energy and commodity energy are, are both off about 13% or and 11% or, or 10%. If you go ahead and click on sector energy, it's going to give you a couple of the uh, ETFs. Um, and if you, if you look here, they've all, you know, we had a little bit of that pullback there off of the June lows. They've all been upgraded to neutral. And this is going to give you uh, several different uh, uh, energy ETFs, oil, oil and gas related, some of them are, uh, you know, natural gas, a lot of different kind of things. But I think you can actually either buy the ETF itself or if you want to go into, uh, let's go ahead and go to the industry group. Click on industries. And if we go, uh, let's go relative strength. Click on it twice so we get the strong ones up there. Uh, and you come down here and you look at, say, oil field integrated majors. Or oil field secondary. It's an oil field secondary uh, as one to look at. And this is going to give you a, a list of stocks. We have a couple of them here: Murphy Oil, uh, MPC. I'm not sure that may be Marathon. Um, you know, the, it's been upgraded. Up down slope is, shows it's under accumulation. It's, Oxy uh, uh, Oxy is uh, still uh, rated along. I think that's Warren Buffett's biggest one of his biggest positions right now. But if you go into the market edge groupings here, the industry groups, uh, you know, just see what some of these ETFs that are outperforming, which which ones have the, the highest relative strength numbers. And then, uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's uh, natural gas, if it's uh, exploration, whatever, then you can go into the industry group and actually find some of the stocks that are the strongest stocks. And the whole thing, if, you, if, you're in the, if you're in the strongest sector and in, in the strongest stocks, you're going to make money. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be volatile, especially with the, you know, the Russian war going on and then, uh, um, you know, OPEC talking about possibly cutting, cutting production at the next meeting. And this is going to be, a, this is going to give you a buying opportunity in here where I think you could probably pick up, a, a, you know, 10, 12, 15% possibly uh, on, on a bounce in some of these oil stocks. I know a lot of people think, well, they've already made their move. According to that uh, head and, reverse head and shoulders pattern, You've got a, uh, 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 a group there, a sector that looks like it's going to move higher while you're watching everything else go down. And um, that's, that's, that's pretty much all I have for today, Will. But I think I would be cautious on, on the broader market in here. I, I would, you know, th historically this week ends up kind of flat, um, but we're seeing it selling off. And, um, you know, with low volume, you may have a volatility. It's probably going to be a little more than it normally would be. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be buying the dips in here. I would wait to see what happens over the next week or two. We're going to have more, uh, more economic data come out. And, again, uh, good news is bad news uh, for, for investors right now because uh, as long as the, the, the numbers come in, the economy is strong, the, the, that takes the pressure off the Fed to, to maybe you know, take their foot off the, off the pedal a little bit on these rate hikes. And today's uh, – uh, data we saw today was was you know much stronger than what we thought, and that's that's uh, if anything that's probably influenced them that, them to move three quarters of a point uh, at this stage uh, you know going into September. All right, well that's all we have for you this week. Remember, if you have a question you'd like to answer on the next Tuesday Tech Talk, email it in support at marketedge.com or ask one of our live chat representatives to pass your question along to us for the next Tuesday Tech Talk. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.